it's it's an amazing year for you. You've just been awarded the RBA gold medal. You've you've had a an amazing career spanning cities around the world, designing extraordinary architecture. Um, can we start by talking about what cities you think are getting the mix right, are doing architecture well? What are your favorite cities? Um, well, I mean, my favorite cities, I'm, I, I mean, I, of course, I like London a lot and because I live here. I mean, I've always loved New York. I don't think it's an issue which cities do do it well. I think these cities all have, the major cities all have similar problems. And I think problems and also, uh, I think there, there was a major, I think, change in the last, let's say, 20 years. While before many people moved to the countryside, you have, I think now most cities have more densification. There's more people propelled to the city centers. Uh, it's a kind of a network city. People want to socialize. They want to meet each other. Uh, they want to do things. Uh, they're networking, they're working. So I think that propels, so you need to do it to deal with the idea of densification, how you deal with, how you deal with this. And what, what do you think your approach would be if you were to take, if you were to design a whole city as opposed to a building, what do you think would the essential ingredients well, be? You know, I don't think it's possible now, right, these days to really design a whole city, but I think you should have a, I mean, I, I, I suppose in, in London, you, know, would, you would think that uh, you will deal with the idea of how to deal with the high rise and where do you place it. Uh, it seems a bit random where they are placed. And I think there is a, a, a move uh, of uh, high density, uh, n no high rise, which makes the size very dense and also doesn't allow for any public domain or civic zone to enter these sites. So they have become much more like very old fashioned and very fortified. And um, maybe there was a reflection on how Berlin was developed after the, the wall came down, which is now 25 years. So I think it's, these are these, I think these are the issues. And I when mean, New York doesn't have the problem because it has a high rise and it, you can build towers more or less everywhere. But, um, but I think you also have to deal with the, with the open space, with a, you invent parks or, and therefore the presence of the public domain is very important in these buildings. Is the social mix important too, in terms of affordability? I mean, we talk about... I, I think that, you know, I don't think it should be uh, based on zoning and that certain people live in certain places and others don't. I think it should be... I'm not sure the housing, the housing project in London works or anywhere else. Uh, I mean, I think it does work better maybe in European cities because they have much more committed to social housing. Uh, and, but um, I think in London, there's a, I find it problematic. Mm -hmm. So we talked about that, that... I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, relocation of people and from social housing, which have begun to develop as kind of uh, commercial projects. I'm not, I don't know where they are being moved to. I don't, I don't know. But I, I think, you know, doing kind of even dense social housing in the inner city would be quite attractive. Mm -hmm. So very dense, high density. Well, I think it needs to be. It doesn't have to be high density. We don't need it. I think there's pressure on developers in London to make high density because uh, the land is so expensive. It's like a bit, I mean, one can analyze London in the same way when, if you look at Japan, Tokyo 20 years ago, it's a very similar problem. Very expensive land prices very expensive buildings and you know they all even developed two meter buildings because the land was so precious so i think one can learn these lessons from other places do you think conservation has a place in the making of a, a city is it important to preserve uh, i think it's it's uh, you need to have a twist on conservation um I, I don't know i think some things should be done but i think you need to do them i i need to do them in an interesting way and I mean, if you look at Venice, which is, of course, a very stunning, beautiful city, but its preservation and conservation led to it being quite, you know, sleepy. And, 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 and except for the time when you have the Venice Biennale and the film festival and so on like that. But, you know, the rest of the time it's very beautiful, but 
I think it has no growth. So if you want a city to grow, you need to have space for, uh, for newness. You can't just, you know, keep everything the same. Are there emerging ideas in architecture that you're excited about? Um, I mean, I think the, you know, um, the technology has made, made possible to do things which are, which have a, a level of a complexity which you couldn't do before, and I think it is very exciting. Um, I think there was a very great run for the, in less than the last 10 years, but, you know, the pragmatists, what I call the pragmatists, not because they're, they're pragmatic, or the conservative element is always lurking in the background to combat any new change. And I think it's a shame because there's such, if you compare what's happening into architecture technology, is that it's kind of worlds apart. And uh, we're not using this, this, these innovations in a positive, in a great way, I mean, all over the place. And you've talked recently about, about London, about a feeling like um, the new buildings going up are very ordinary, not... Well, they're, they're well made, but I mean, this is not something... I think that uh, there are great sites in the city, especially the sites over the, all the kind of rail link and these new kind of enormous sites. And I think they should have another, another take. If we talk about sustainability, which I know Ricky Burdett mentioned earlier, is that, has that become a kind of lip service in architecture? I mean, is there, is there such thing as a green building? And I think it's very important that we pay attention to sustainability. And, but I think it's very important to do it in a very interesting way because it's not just using certain materials or doing certain things. I think it's also in the way you organize a project. You know, I think that's very important. So I think it's very important to do that. When, how and people, you know, people throw those words around uh, because they are the right words. But, you know, uh, but I think it's very important to pay attention to it. And what, when you say organize a project? Well, I think it's, you know, it's not just using, I think it's like if you, in the way you allow the product to have certain light or shadow or, you know, uh, how you make the openings or how you construct the, the buildings, you know, how they are done in the composition, they all have impact on sustainable. So more in the fabric of the building, not and in also, technology. But also in technology, I mean, in the way, of course, the most important in the way you heat your cool, how you uh, use the right materials. I mean, of course, these are things also very important. Do you think the infrastructure of our cities, um, do you think there's enough thought about the movement of people in and out of I really them? don't think so. I mean, I was in New York last week. The traffic is absolutely unbelievable. It's a complete gridlock. And, and, and I do travel by car a lot in London. I know it's not fashionable, uh, but um, I really can't cycle. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 uh, maybe the systems are good, but there is so much traffic in London and, and all these big cities that you need to think of transportation. Uh, I'm not sure it's better, more tube lines or more, more some other, some new invention and movement. I don't know what it is, but it's really, I think it's a problem. Do you have a solution? No, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I, I mean, now I, I mean, I often cross the um, embankment and uh, now there's a kind of bicycle highway, uh, which is nice for the cyclists, but the rest of the traffic is a mess. So I was thinking maybe there should be an elevated uh, cycle path or, and there needs to be, I don't know, something, something else. Um, I don't know how you discourage carpooling. I don't know how you discourage so many cars uh, in the city. We've talked about women in architecture before. It's something that I work on, and you are the most famous woman architect in the world. Your office is 40% women. What do you think needs to change to enable more designers, female designers, to rise? Well, I mean, I think that, um, it's, it's, as you know, it's very tough for women. And... Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's improved a lot in the last um, 20, 30 years. It's a lot better. I think part of the problem, you know, I, I feel it's continuity. When women can take some time off, uh, you know, uh, there is still prejudice. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't see it, but I think there is prejudice. 
I mean, I see it against me, but not against, not necessarily in the people in my office. Mm -hmm. So I think it needs continuity and encouragement from the friends, the family, the colleagues, the office, for these women to, to excel in the practice. Do you think the female architect is respected by the construction industry? I don't know. Uh, I can't say it's, I think I have a different, I don't know. I know that 10, 20 years ago they were not. But um, I think you have many more uh, you know, project architects who are women, uh, management who are women, clients are women. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's improved that situation a lot. If you wanted to give advice to an emerging architect, someone coming up, um, it, to challenge them about the way that they approach their architecture or design, what would you say? To challenge you? Someone young, it's beginning. I mean, I always say the same thing. I mean, you know, I think that there is no trick but hard work and on, on really uh, educating yourself and continuously. Uh, it gives you enormous confidence to combat whatever difficulty you might come across. And so it's, just, it's not a way, it, it's difficult to, to do it, but you need to just be constantly on the alert. I wanted to ask you, because your buildings are extraordinary, they are novel in their design and their form and they are experimental, do you think every building in a city can be extraordinary? No, I think that, you know, you can have a lot of projects which are generic, uh, you know. I always think that we need to re-look at the master planning of cities because I think the, um, the way the geometry of the land is, would be organized will impact on how extraordinary it is. And so we are still dealing with a similar system, you know, street patterns, kind of a, not a grid, but relatively kind of street, building the street. So I think if this needs to be, if you want more public domain and more porosity on the ground, you need to organize the ground. And the ground, I think, is a very important domain. So, um, yeah, that's what one has to do. Is that about getting architects more involved in city making, that master planning? We've talked well, about I think that, you know, master planning, urbanism, and architecture should be much more connected. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't believe in this thing that you do a master plan and someone else does uh, something else and there's another layer. Uh, but... Uh, I think in the, it needs to be start from that, that the master plan, the urbanism is very connected to each other. And then at the same time, with envisaging what the buildings would be like. Mm -hmm. I, I think it also doesn't have to be totally homogeneous. It could be done by different hands. So would, we've got a lot of mayors in the office today, or sorry, in the office, in the, in the audience today. If we wanted to, to challenge them to, um, to work with an architect, or what would you challenge them to do? To bring architects into their team or to, to engage someone yeah, I mean, to do I a I think it's just kind of to, to have kind of forward thinking and to, en to engage with maybe a group of people who uh, can look into the future and, and depict what, what is needed or what, how it should be done. Or. Mm -hmm. In terms of the master plan, in terms of infrastructure, the things we yeah, do. Yeah, in front of, in front of all these things. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, what is your project in your career that you are most proud of? You know, it's very difficult to say. I mean, I think, you know, I, 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 you know, Vitra was our first building. I was very proud of it. You know, I love the Rome project because I think it took a, a long time in the making. It's also very contextual at the same time, very new. The project in Baku is amazing. And we've done recently this year some very, very tiny projects like the building in Oxford. And they're very different. And we've been very lucky We've done, you know, infrastructure like the bridge in Abu Dhabi, the bridges in other places. We've done railway stations. We've done very small projects, like in the level of kind of design, and, and we've done master plans. So we've been very lucky to have had a very big variety of programs. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a favorite? No, really, I like I, so, so, I go on and off them, so... <laughs> No, I don't, I mean, I can't say I have a, I mean, I, they each have a, an aspect to me, which is, which I like, obviously. Um, yeah, I think, I think I, I like Rome and Baku. Rome and Baku, Rome being the maxi. Yeah, the maxi, yes. yeah. Yes, because of its 
positioned in the city? Well, I think because it was a, it's a very contextual project. It came at a particular time in my career. We wanted to say a very, uh, in a way, a very interesting moment in my career. And um, you know, I like Wolfsburg, which is a great project, and, and I think many of them are. And now we're doing, now we, we're doing these towers and residential buildings in New York. And, and of course, I shouldn't forget this, the China project, which are extraordinary because to, to build, you know, I don't know, half a million square meters of office space uh, in one go was, uh, was amazing. People don't often refer to your work as contextual. Would you argue it is contextual, your work? It's not. Well, it's, it, it's, a tech, it's, it's contextual in a particular way. You know, I think that, I, I don't think, I mean, people think you don't respect the context, but it depends on the situation. And, and uh, in China, the, the, the context would have changed, would change. So there is no context, or there is a context which is different. And, and not, not ever in China, but in this particular developments. So it's very difficult to, to say. I mean, in New York, if you build, it's contextual because you have the grid, which combines all the sides. The same with Miami. They have another kind of grid, uh, and you have the water. So, But the reason I say Rome is contextual is because every line in Rome, you know, in the Rome project, adjusts to the existing geometry of the side. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not kind of randomized. Uh, but, but, you know, I think that we have to, we have to sometimes start from a new palette, a new plate, and invent the context which these things go on. But that, I think that's all our time for today. Thank you right. very much. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>